Hey, Source. Agent Solo, Matt Rice here. Running through another week of crowdfunding uh, soloable games. Um, plenty up there at the moment, some big ones. Um, and I apologize, I'm a day late doing this. Um, got caught up yesterday with some stuff, but let's get into it. Um, some exciting campaigns here. One of the big ones, which I'll start with, of course, is Grim Coven. I think pretty much almost every single reviewer has had their hands on this, um, especially when it's Awakened Realms, um, quite a big company doing very well. And if you don't, have never heard of them before, um, they've done Tainted Grail, um, ISS Vanguard, quite big campaign type games. This one's more of a scenario boss but battler, so slightly different. They did do a Dragon Eclipse, to be honest, as well, which is a bit, it's a bit of both uh, campaign and scenario, but it hasn't yet to, to deliver. Uh, almost raised $2 million here, 10,000 backers, doing extremely well. Um, so wonderful players. Um, the one thing I like, um, I mean, there's more, more than one thing I like about this campaign. The one really good thing I like about this campaign, they've split their pledges into two pathways um, for affordability or for those that want the huge miniatures. Because I look at this, you know, I look at that and go, okay, I don't paint, and the miniatures are enormous. I don't have that kind of space. I don't need boxes and boxes and boxes that take up room um, in my downstairs basement of games. So I'm, I'm thinking I might go for the standard pledge in this one, but let's, let's have a look through. So pretty much sign your blood. And apparently some, some of the reviewers are saying you can, there's something where you can sign with like a little bit of red ink. Um, you're packed with the hunters. Um, Core box special edition is a game found exclusive. I think the miniatures version is only on game found. Although there is rumours, another thing, which I probably should put in a board game news, it's kind of soon, um, Game Found is coming up with their own store for creators to put up their stuff. So it's, um, I don't know how it's really going to work, but this is what the fear was with some people that originally saw the more big companies coming onto Kickstarter and Game Found, that it's no longer turning into, let's fund an indie company, which there's still obviously some of those, but it's more, it not be more of an aim of like, let's pre-order from a big company. Um, your thoughts on that? You can leave that in the comments too, as I've talked about. But um, let's move on. Let's just stick to the games. Um, so we've got a core box here with some stretch goals with some fancy looking artwork. Uh, the theme obviously is very dark Victorian type looking theme. Um, it's a boss battle, as I said, you've got these really, really interesting, gross <laughs> looking bosses. Um, they're called grief bounds, look at these. And um, I think the stretch goal, the way they've done this, is that there's a skin revealed each day, which I like that. You know you're guaranteed to get it in your, in your game. Um, as I said, a lot of people have reviewed this. There's plenty of videos online. I'm sure a lot of people already checked this out, if you know of it. And I'll, I'll be put on my um, his, here it comes sort of watch list at the end of my videos in the last couple of weeks as well. So it does look pretty cool with the minis, I've got to say. Um, Apparently there's a solo system where you can have like lieutenants or something. So they're not necessarily the full character. You have one full character and you have like one or two other like lieutenants or something helping you out. Um, but of course you can just play two, two, three or four characters on your own. Special edition $109 is exclusive while the $59 is um, the standard edition, which comes with the like the standees, which is what I'm thinking of getting. I know you probably come to retail, but I have a feeling... For Australia, there's no way, and that's 60 US, which is about $100 Australian. There's no way this would be under $100 in Australia. Um, that's my tip for this one. Um, well, this, who knows, it may pop up somewhere, even though it says Game Found Exclusive. Um, but it looks like you get the same amount of stuff, essentially. 10 day evolution base. You just get single layer boards, you get standees, you don't get acrylic sort of markers. Um, to keep the cost down. And then both editions give all this stuff. There's also stretch goals. The hunters look like cool looking minis. They've got their own little boards. So it's like kind of like a dice placement game from what I recall. You roll all dice. I don't know what you call it. Dice action placement. <laughs> so you roll up your dice and they come up with a certain action. So you've got to perform those kind of actions. Similar to what, um, in a way, similar to the callback game that I was talking about in the video. Recently from um, UKG, um, and has like this little track here. It's like an experience track, but the more you get, the more corrupt you become as well. Uh, so it's an interesting little mechanic. Do, do, 
so yeah each each boss each um character had their own little special um mini mechanic within themselves okay let's move on uh, what should i move on to this is a very large campaign page to be honest um go to stretch goals see what's coming up to stretch goals you know the personal stories which is like the iss vanguard stuff this was free if you followed early um you can even get the acrylic add-ons if you get stand in by the acrylic add-ons or terrain add-ons the terrain miniatures sleeves of course uh, plenty of people done playthroughs i don't know who that is they've done a playthrough um not sure if the dice towers down here who is this board game hangover Fair enough. um Rolling solos, no one before. Members of Meeple, which is all the guys who've got the hands on this. Meet me at the table. Uh, these guys, these guys. I mean, everyone's, everyone's had a look at it. Um, Ninja highlights. You can get Sun Drop editions. They've done that before. It looks quite nice. If you can afford it, by all means, if you really enjoy that look on the table. Yeah, uh, shipping wise, what have we got here? Oops. Mostly standard, so part of Asia gets a bit here. If the real price is actually not too bad, seems a lot worse. But they are a big company, they've got a big reach. Um, and their boxes do come pretty fancy. I've got the ISS Bango, where it's got its own like self, um, uh, the box is like made for that game. Cool, all right, let's move on. Talk plenty about Grim Cover. I'm sure a lot of you guys have some of you guys are probably getting sick of hearing about it, especially if you're not keen on it. Let's get moving on. I'm sticking with Game Found. We've got the solo game of the month, Okinawa. Um, apologies if I pronounced that incorrectly. Last Battle of World War II. Another one of those ones by Gabe Barry. He's got a few of these coming out every month. 747 backers are doing pretty good. Uh, Legion Soldiers Victory is using dice to activate and upgrade actions on your rondel as you capture objectives, defeat the enemy, and save the day. Um, trailer there, of course. They've got cards and a bit of dice. So these are designed to be solo, small, smallish games. Uh, uh, we got components, got some action cards, some enemy cards, objective cards, scenario cards. The ten scenarios. I'm not sure if that means it's ten different games or just scenario within one game. Get a free dice tower feeling. Oh, here we go. Use dice to move and activate action cards. Okay, two moves in two spots this way, and he gets to heal one. Okay. Upgrade your cards to perform new and better actions. Okay, defeat enemies, put objectives. Don't know how you're defeating them, but anyway. Capture the final objective before the time runs out to win the game. Alrighty, there's a rule book there. For those that want to download it. $24, that's quite good pricing. Once our culture has got a preview, what rolling solo, of course. He's got to get his hand to that one. Uh, let's see where it goes here. Yeah. yeah, it does look interesting. $5 or $6 shipping, that's really good. Um, I hope, I'm wishing this all the success because this is really good to have solo game of the month. Um, promoting the solo stuff is very, very nice. All right, next one. Dark Blood by Meeple Pug. There's Dark Blood and there's also a game called Blood coming up too <laughs> in a couple weeks' time. So you're going to get plenty of blood. But, um, not, not the blood of the video game, though. Uh, one thousand four hundred twenty-four back episodes, that's quite good, I think. This one where it's quite a dark theme, which may... Scare some people off, but also some people are really intrigued with that kind of stuff. And, uh, the renders of these minis look quite nice, but I'm not a minis person, so what would I know? Um, 20 out 20 stress goals unlocked, and there's more coming. Uh, the other occult resources for your home. Taint, taint the very earth, across the innocent of their blood. What's it? Does it scrub all this? Dark Lord plays in the abyss of darkness where they embody powerful asymmetric cults. Really explain me how the game works, but I'm sure there's more stuff down coming down here. Alex uh, says that the horror setting mechanics looks and is littered with absolutely amazing components. Fair enough. Jesse's got something to say. Mechanics. Uh, that's that's nice. And they're being quite honest here. They're saying family game. No, it's more towards like games. It's a very thematic game, not abstract. Um, look, some more take that type game. Not strategy involved. That's yeah, nice to let people know that. You know, this is what you this is what you're going to get a little bit in general. Comes in different languages, game highlights. 
a Euro game. Join one of the four asymmetric courts, demologists, warlocks, necromancers, or doom sayers. Righty. Modules on location abilities and randomly play hexes each round, ensure endless replayability. Okay, so the promising replayability. Place your work strategy to dominate locations, collect resources, and proselytize. Pros Looks like cross pedants. I don't know what that means. Doesn't sound nice. Um, and that's the, if you can hear that, that's the helicopter heading to the hospital. <laughs> Sometimes flies right over the top of my house. And then how are your spellbook using the resources you've gathered and choose which resources to upgrade? Oh, interesting. So upgrade your actions. Very common thing. Crap the landmines so you can access into the events game pouch and gain access to new rituals. You're all like competing to be the top corruption guy. I love that you die for level by hanging peasants at the tree of the dam. Okay. Get ink wash our artwork, unless we've got rituals, add ons, uh, book add on, more book, stretch goals, summary stretch goals, rewards. The 99 euro for the game is wonderful. Like, doesn't really say how solo works in this one. Wouldn't mind knowing if, if, um, if a designer watches this, wouldn't mind reaching out to see how that works. Um, is that it? And then the rest are just add ons. Painting lots of artwork stuff if you're into that kind of artwork, which I'm sure some people will be. Which is what you get in components, and there's a book attached as well. Oh, there is a solo video. You can see that on the side here. Um, gameplay videos, it's a tabletop simulator as well. Uh, is this one? Jesse's done one. Graham Tatum. Solo video is coming very, very soon. Ooh, can I do one? <laughs> um, cool. All right, let's move on. Taking more time here. Uh, the last game for game time I got this week is um, Yom's Vikings. Oh, that's Yom's Vikings. Um, say about it. It's a tactical card game with deck building elements in the amazing world of space faring Vikings. It's got 63 backers, so it probably needs a little bit more help from Dark Rabbit. Wonderful players. They'll come to the among the roots of you just feel the world tree it sees mid guards present, so it's still got that same Viking law set in space. It's available in English and Polish. Uh, okay, good gameplay description. So they've done their own little one. It's got more of a text based like how things run with this game. It's also to push your luck and play a couple on top of the deck. Plus, will take place in the game. So, wouldn't mind. So, in this country, I wouldn't mind seeing a bit more graphical how this works. Uh, I'm a visual person, I'm sure there's a lot of other visual people. Um, I know there's probably, as you said, there's like a video. Well, that's the launch trailer. That looks like Polish the video, but I hope you love the gameplay. Uh, we got 40 euro to entry level, 80 euro. Add ons. Game contents we get. Hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't want seeing how more works on the actual game page itself, but yeah, check that out, guys. If you into your Viking space, Vikings into deck building, it'll be something to look at those couple of videos there. All right, let's go to the Kickstarter ones. Um, the first one popped out at me in the Kickstarter ones, Rise of the Wastelands. Um, 169 backers. So a little bit on the low side, I imagine. I mean, they're only half funded so far. 4X post apocalyptic games resources are scarce. The remaining survivors fight to rule the wastelands. And this looks as you had a quick this before. Um, Wolfhorn Games. And this is meant to be one to four players, I think. But yeah, one to four. Looks interesting about that forex setup of like deploying things. You know, would love to see how solo works for this because it's very rare to get forex solo game. I think the only one, I mean, some people will talk about Zyre, I think there's another one, it's an old one. But um, Uprising does a very good job, Curse of the Last Emperor. That's a very good job of a forex, but you have to control. Some people don't like controlling two factions, that's still kind of co op, I guess. You're trying two factions against two factions in the 4X game, but you can play it solo, and I love it. 
a really good game. Um, but wouldn't mind seeing more in this area. It looks kind of cool. Yeah, so assuming putting these out gives you resources, they might be, are these your armies here? Yeah. Mark Street's got a look at this one. Shay from Rado's. Run Throughs has got one. Adam Singer. Deluxe Kickstarter edition. Yeah, what do we got? I should forget about Kickstarter. You've got to go on the right side to see what's going on. 59 euros for standard edition. 89 euros for Deluxe. A bit of a difference between that and Deluxe. I imagine Deluxe one has minis. Plastic minis. Well, this one has wooden miniatures. Which I wouldn't mind that. Wooden miniatures sound kind of cool. And then the retail pledges for those that want retail. Yeah. So we'll go on checking out how that plays. Doesn't say much about solo, how that works. As I said, a bit more with Forex, how solo really works. I imagine they'll be probably more aiming at how the two to four player works. Not seeing much about solo at all. So. Again, designers listening out to me, please put something up about solo. It'll be fantastic if you can play solo with this one. Uh, does it have gameplay here? Maybe I'm missing it somewhere. Allocate influence, four matches, claim achievements, reset attribute. No rounds of phase, the playstick turns one off another until a player has two or less influence tokens and able to at the end of the turn. That one on the place, spreading all the influence tokens on the achievement cards, okay. Player who first claimed the fifth achievement when the allocation process ends the game. So, yeah, you'd have to kill everyone in the game. Okay, it's got some ideas how it works here. Excellent. That's what I'm after seeing how this kind of runs. Manage your actions. So, you've got these actions, you put certain actions in here. Right, so you've got plenty of actions. Look at you only got four cubes there between. Yeah, interesting. Explore the wastelands. This is, this is what I'd like to see. This should be at the top of the page. Um, except for maybe like generally what the first reward looks like, I guess. Explore the wastelands. Okay. Explore cards. You can probably find resources, I mentioned. Build your outpost to get to generate more resources. Collect resources. Yeah. Capital upgrades. Upgrade your armies. Mm hmm. And the achievement have three point. Yeah, so you're aiming for objectives. So it's a forest game where you're aiming to be the first to have get the objective done or something. Interesting. Yeah, I would love to know how solo works in this because it could be something in right my alley. Like it's it's on my to watch list at the moment. After that, kind of happy with that. Next one, bubble net. Uh, I've heard about this. I think Chip Theory Games sort of followed it on their Facebook page. It's a meditative multiplayer solitaire board game. Like that humpbacks. So one four players only take about 10 minutes. Uh, Catherine Dreads are first created, 270 backs. She's backed a lot of games. Got 139 backs on this one, halfway through funding. You can get a print play version. Retail pack deposit $25. Standard edition's $40. Podmate party pack, that's a few of them in the We can be special person. Yeah, right. Actual pictures of that was cool. One was blowing the spiral bubbles while their two plumbers help hurt or hoard the fish. She could buy had to play. Each place is on board with their kit of five bubbles for 24 fish and two pod made tokens. There's more place to that's why you can play salt. Everyone just does it at the same time. Back to the front. There's a pretty like a little theme on an abstract like puzzle game books things. Be kind of interesting if you if you wanted to yeah, solve a little puzzle, get your fish and get, optimize your moves. Pledge levels already gone through that. Stretch goals. Online testing. Tabletop playground. I never use that one. Bubble net. You always well. Your powers always bubbles. Very grooves. 
where he where he creates games in those mud walls. Cool. Ready? That one. Let's keep moving. Next game: The Pirate Republic, Africa and Gambit. Swashbuckling board game adventure for one to five peeps. You get the pirates, pillage and plunder. Yar. Uh, 252 backers so far, so it's pledged. 24 days to go. Um, what have we got here? This is created by Tom Butler. It's on six games. Green Feet Games. Seven dollars for the standard swashbuckler pledge. Nine on dollars for the Treasure Galleons. So that gives you some minis of all things and a couple of your cards. All gone is what's this? Oh, yeah, they're probably got rid of. Um, one of five players it is. Based on the original Pirate Republic, the second standalone edition to introduce a wealth of new features. Okay. Based on a previous game, but I guess modernized maybe you will. Ship tokens, pirate markers, stretch goals, get a play map. Gameplay, draw cards from your pirate deck and plan your turn based on the tiding effects to resolve whether the wins favor you. Seven actions to choose from. A lot of actions. Okay. Increase swag and level up your pirate through righteous acts on the high sea. So you gain points. Form companies and fellow to work together. Using its soul rules as a group. The soul is it. It's slightly different game books things. Is that the solo stuff? I'm not sure. Let's make deck building. Sandbox Adventure promises the campaign mode. Hmm. Okay. So if you're into your pirates and you like a, like a bit of an adventure, what do for you? Hey, it's that pirate dude. I've seen him before. I think it was on 20 Epic Pirates, wasn't it? Shipping information. Cool. Not too many um, video review things on here. There's a couple. On how to play, so check that one out. If you want to. All right, let's keep moving. Second edition of Trekking the World and Bucket List Expansion. A major reason of the best selling world travel game with a solo mode now. 2000 backers, that's actually quite good. Didn't think it was that popular. I have heard of this. Um, yeah, okay, so we've got the player boards, all the things, cards, the world map. Hmm. Showing off some artwork. Hey, this in the Opera House. Seven bucks of travel there. Pretty cheap. Um, okay. Overview. Yeah. Not much big combos. Right. How to play, first of all. Choose an alternative. Travel. There's your play I'll say choose it. Okay. Gain the money on it. Okay. Interesting. I like it. I like it. Assuming these are worth points and can earn you special tokens and super future itineraries. Is that these things? What's the Africa? Well, that's if you're in Africa, is it? You gain the two. Okay. Take sure I have an encounter. Two is a worth points encounters. Give you powers you can combo. Alright, solo mode. Compete against AI tourists who draw up your cost fast and easy AI. Have different levels of it. Alright, so I think what it does, it just sets a goal that you've got to get to. So it's kind of beat your own score still. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, two's back. Slightly okay, they've tried to not maybe it's a little bit more than just beat your own score. Okay, well, there we have it. Um, if I did go through the pledges here, forty dollars, uh, fee for the that and expansion, yep, underdog games. Next one, we'll get there. Ages Dream 1129 back as well. That's actually quite good. Never heard of this one until today. A medium heavy Euro game with a dice rondelle. Where players work with Ada Lovelace. Build the first 
identical computer. Well, it's an interesting thing. A bit different. Alicat Games are credited 20. Retail edition's 45 pounds. Easter exclusive 54 pounds. Collector 79 pounds. Yeah, right. Group Fletcher. Mm -hmm. Nice big board with a rondel in the middle. Yeah, UK. Okay. Create a physical machine. Add dice to a dual load punch board, manipulating the values with addition, subtraction, and multiplication gears. Right. I am a massive kind of former. <laughs> so it's kind of doing it. As my ex-teacher, so this is kind of up my alley, I guess. Push dice off the rondel. Move dice around the rondel. Clicking bonus, pushing the lower value. Build a deck of partners. Upgrade your action. Yeah, okay. Box. Yeah, get plenty of D6 dice. Play components. Uh, let's go to gameplay. Uh, programs is a bonus points. Institutions. Very Eurogamey, as it says. You couldn't mark in certain rooms, certain areas. Travel. Solomon, test your skill against the silver lady solo autom automata. Draw dice on the dice by determining the action. Adjust the challenge with dual layer difficulty levels. And pants up the solar track of warning poses to the silver lady depending on dice and values. Right, yeah, so you've got to uh, beat the silver lady. Interesting. Uh, Rado's right, got to play through. Yeah. You could play on tabletop single. That's really good. Yeah, I like the look of that campaign. I can see why it's getting a thousand backers there. Interesting. Check that one out. Uh, last one, I think, of my Kickstarters, uh, Pinky Pals. That's almost fun in 72 and back is one to four players. This is where you and your friends take on the role of Antarctica's Grace Heroes. Yes, we're talking about superhero penguins. Cooperative dice rolling combat game. Combat with penguins, eh? That's done by South Pole Games. Uh, retail deposit, uh, the base game for $39. Uh, buy one, donate one, $78. You've got plenty of blah, 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 blah. unique dice and ones and abilities. Choose from four distinctive pinky pals. It's in the box. Character sheets. Yeah. Unique action decks. 50 cards unique to each pal. Eight wooden six sided dice. Meeples. Enemy scenarios. I trust. Yeah, you're right. Nice little co-op game. Leader rolls the dice. Play, use the dice. Play take turn using too much needs, so. Put it the D4 to Ah, so if you, if you try to match symbols, okay. Okay. Any ability reactions. Ah, so if you do that, then that's kind of cool with mechanic, actually. So if you choose that action, then you know what you're going to get from the boss. So it's kind of a thinky type game, almost. Yeah, like dice allocation, the reaction type game. Play cards from hand. Place power markers. Thinking phase to regroup phase. Yeah, I don't mind that. It looks kind of cute. It's interesting. Like it's, it seems like a smallish game, but it looks like there's a lot of tactics and choices. This is a really juicy, hearty coffee game and has the balance of what I'm looking for. Yeah, Kim from Kimberly. Yeah, cool. No, I like it. Yeah, I think that page looks pretty good. Uh, hopefully it gets funded. Let's move on to um, uh, Game Crafter. Actually, first of all, Backer Kit had nothing new for me. Um, and as always, I'm always showing off the new stuff of the last week that I haven't talked about before. Um, I've I've added this in a uh, in another video I've done on Decade. I've talked about it in board in a board game news video. Um, I'll do a quick view again over this. This is done by the daughter of um, Jason uh, Jason Glover, who has done Iron Helm, Tin Realm, Dust Runner, Desolate, 
a lot of solo um, games from GameCrafter. And he's had his hand in, I think, so I think he said, like, don't quote, quote me, I'm probably wrong with this, but I think he said he helped playtest this, but otherwise it's his daughter's um, um, idea and imagination into this game. She's running this one. Um, so it's a solo survival horror, press your luck again. The solo only game. And there's a parasitic outbreak in the hospital. Players one through survivors to just escape. These are the three survivors. You've got a little bit of stats. Uh, it's sold 75 copies so far, so it's getting towards the past the 100 where you it's what's now costing $23.08 um, to get now. Yeah. Uh, we're at the end of the campaign. These are the killers. The gameplay. So you draw from an exploration deck. I think you roll like a 10 sided die to see what you do. You also have encounters. There's a playthrough video here, which I'll be keen to check out. It's one player game. And there's a nice little screenshot. It's a pretty small um, footprint, which is always handy when traveling, of course. And, yeah, I think you have like a skill card, you get items, you travel through the exploration deck to try to escape. It's a bottle top game. I reckon that's pretty cool. Uh, the other one I noticed, trying to be checked out properly, is uh, Rome Alone, which is a solo game as well. 10 minute resource measured solo Euro game. Has 11 copies sold, so 20 days ago, but needs a bit more backing. Uh, cost $22.75 at this stage. What does it look like here? We've got this. Ooh. It will be quite resourceless and sacrifice. It will stretch your strategy even into its limits. It will take roughly 10 minutes. The resource management, I assume you spend things to gain things to try and build things up. Kind of reminds me of uh, like Unbroken, the way that that resource management mechanic goes. The one broken had like the, the flipping over the cards. I'm not sure if that's the same here or not. There's two dynamic campaigns. Very nice. So, yeah. Um, I don't think there was a playthrough there. That's one thing that's probably only missing with me. Oh, wait, there's a video here. I just says overview. But that's still pretty handy. Yeah, check that one out, guys. Um, I'm now up to um, uh, things that, that I've noticed are coming up to crowdfunding soon. Um, Keith Matejka. Matejka, Matejka, Matejka. I've probably pronounced that incorrectly. I'm oh, sorry. Um, so Thunderworks games behind role player um, and uh, cartographers. I've got a game coming up called Emerald Skulls. It's one to eight players. So there is Solomon in it, but maybe, maybe it's aimed for a play game. I don't know. It's coming up on July 2nd. Uh, looks like a smallish type game from look at this. Push your luck as you roll the dice. Wager in real time with up to eight players. And there must be a soul mode in, within it. Um, so you can notify yourself from launch. It's 344 people already noticing that one. And let's have a quick scan through Game Fan because I love how Game Fan does this. Puts it nice and clearly when you go up to a filter and just say, you know, one player upcoming. And it comes up with it. I've talked about Explore It before. I'm really looking forward to that one. That's a tower defense um, version game. It will still be, I'll try and do it next Wednesday again. It will still not be out by next Wednesday. This game might be Sky Care Horde Campaigns. Um, have a quick look. The Last Zombie in Cuba. I don't know these games, but let's have a look at Sky Care. Um, a lot of comments about it. One to two players still. Is it just more cards or add something else? Three standalone and combinable chapters. Yeah. The campaign is just a new one. Claim to be standalone. What's this one add? Four new horde decks, four new prima, eight new castles. It's the first time an actual campaign game, oh yeah, so it adds a campaign to it. Cool. And what else we got? We've got this Odolin Dungeons of Doom. I mean, that's not going to be out next week either. And Blood, as I talked about. I'm going to keep my eye on those two. Something interesting there. But anyway, I might stop there. I think I'm talking way too much. Ooh, there's a new thinning bell coming up too. Which is interesting. I should follow that. Um Freddy Sauce. That's it. <laughs> I don't know what I was gonna say there. Um I, I think I was just gonna say that the thinning valve red mist. I um 
uh, as I said, I backed the the thing Val Cormac Macaet on the other side of midnight. Um, it was really interesting. I had a good chat to the designer and um, about it because I wanted to find out more, and he he made contact with me as well. And I actually ended up backing it. It was it was yeah, I'm kind of, really impressed with how it plays, the choices you have, and the narrative is very thematic. So whether this is the same or not, I mean, we can have a quick look. Uh, so it's it's made for one to two players. It's an interesting skirmish game set in the world of Thing Vale. Each player controls the fate of their warband. It's more of a skirmish game, so it's a slightly different version of the game. Cool. So this is a preview page, remember? So, um, fantastic looking miniatures there, by the way. Gorgeous. Uh, Channel Power of the Gods, by quoting the favor and making sacrifices and laying offerings at their fame. Trigger ancient magic of the earth veins, lanes, lines of light that throb and hum with the vibrations of cosmic energy. I love the writing, so good. Explore the many takes you can use to achieve victory in the battlefields of red mist. See what kind of dice? It's, it's enough, it's like little teasers and previews, which I love. Like, it makes you try and think, how is this going to play? Are these the leaders that you put on the battlefield and what they can roll? I'm curious. It's, it's also soluble, so it must be like a, maybe there's like a um, AI deck that tells you what they do with reacting to your movements maybe, I don't know. Yeah, it's comprised of a chief spiritual advisor and their warriors, all these powerful combatants can gain skills and increase attributes by spending skull. So skulls is like your resource. Be aware of folks too many unspent skulls will make you your target for your enemies. Cool. Wow. Um, happy with how that looks so far as a preview page. Alrighty. Let's end it there, Solace. To crush the gaming first. Play solid.